Father, we come again just to thank you, Lord, for the things that you do in our lives. We just, again, want to remember Edna and Ruth this time. Just put your healing touch on them and comfort them. Father, we just, again, ask your blessings on this church. Bless each and everyone here. We thank you for our guests. And, and Father, we just uh, pray that you be with your servant this morning as, as I preach your word. Just give me the words that need to be said and have their hearts and minds be open to hear the word that's preached. And Father, we just pray that just continue to just bless this service and just be with each and every one. And we just ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Title of my sermon today is Be Thankful. Now the history of Thanksgiving goes back to 1619 when 38 English settlers in Berkeley 100, Charles City County in Virginia held a day of Thanksgiving to God Almighty for their safe arrival to Virginia. In 1621, the pilgrims held a day of thanksgiving to thank God for the good harvest and celebrated along with the American Indians who had been had given them food to help them get through the winter. You know, right there, they showed the brother they loved that, that um, you know, even though the American Indians were different than them, then they still... You know, treated them as as brothers in Christ or whatever. That you know, they still didn't didn't forget the what great things they had done for them. If one of them helped them get through that winter, they would have all died. You know, they taught them how to fish and so forth. But anyway, the pilgrims understood the feast of tabernacles to thank God for the harvest and thanksgiving traces from that original meaning. The pilgrims had arrived the previous year in 1620 aboard the Mayflower, and many had died that first winter as they landed in Plymouth, Massachusetts. William Brewster read Psalm 100 as a prayer of thanksgiving when they sighted land. Now the pilgrims had come to America for freedom to worship God. The American Indians had helped them get through the winter with food and taught them how to fish and hunt. Now other days of thanksgiving were held on and off by various people. Proclamations of Thanksgiving were mostly made by church leaders in New England until 1682 when leaders of the colonies as well as church leaders made proclamations until after the Revolutionary War. Now, during the time of the Revolutionary War, the Continental Congress, as well as such leaders as George Washington and John Hancock, had made Thanksgiving proclamations in thanking God. President George Washington proclaimed the first nationwide Thanksgiving celebration in America, <coughs> marking November 26, 1789, quote, as a day of public thanksgiving and prayer to be observed by acknowledging with grateful hearts the many and signal favors of Almighty God, end quote. You know, so President George Washington, he understood, you know, the, the true meaning that, you know, that our nation had all been blessed here in the beginning and out throughout its history only because we were serving the Almighty God. As we keep turning away from God, you see what the consequences of what's happened to our nation today. From this time until Abraham Lincoln, the date of Thanksgiving varied by state with the last Thursday in November being the most common date. In 1863, Abraham Lincoln, President Abraham Lincoln, proclaimed the first national Thanksgiving that was to be on the final Thursday of November. It has been a national holiday since that time. This was to thank God for the continuing success of the Union during the Civil War, as well as the blessings God had bestowed on America. Now Sarah Hale had written letters to politicians for 40 years asking for a federal holiday of Thanksgiving. In 1939, President Franklin D. Roosevelt changed the date of Thanksgiving to the third Thursday in November for business purposes, but on December 26, 1941, Congress changed Thanksgiving back to the fourth Thursday in November. Today, a handful of nations also celebrate Thanksgiving, with most being in November as well, though the date may vary. Canada has their Thanksgiving on the second Monday in October to thank God for the harvest season. 
This is Columbus Day in the United States. Now, a few other nations have a harvest celebration. All nations should have a day set aside to thank God, not just for their fall harvest as historically was done, but for all that God has done for them. Today, we often celebrate Thanksgiving with family and large amounts of food, including such things as turkey, stuffing, cranberries, potatoes, other vegetables, bread, and pumpkin pie. Now, we should enjoy the time with family and the food, but not be gluttons and remember that Thanksgiving is the day we thank God for everything. If you would, turn in your Bibles to Proverbs chapter 23, verse 21. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 21. For the drunkard and the glutton shall come to poverty, and drowsiness shall clothe a man with rags. Think about that, and that, you know, there's a lot of people that need to think about that. Too many people, they, they want to eat too much, and they don't, they don't want to, they just want to be lazy. But that's not what, what things are intended to be for. Now, unfortunately, too many people no longer understand the true meaning of Thanksgiving and have turned it into just a day to gather with family and friends, gorge themselves with lots of food, alcohol, watch football and parades, and prepare for Black Friday shopping. The president is too busy pardoning a turkey. Well, in this case, yesterday, the president pardoned two turkeys. He really has no time on his hands. I mean, he's got a lot of time on his hands because he's useless. He'll do it anyway. But, uh, pardoning a turkey instead of asking God to forgive him and the nation of his and our sins and thanking God for having put him in power. The blessings of God, for most, have long been forgotten. Today, people are very unthankful. Turn to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 2. This speaks very much of the time we're living in. And if you read all the other verses in context, you'll really see, but it definitely speaks of today. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 2. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Now, if that doesn't describe today, I, I don't know what, what better, you know, there's nothing better. That, that describes today. Many people are so unthankful that they call Thanksgiving Turkey Day. You know, they just had that on the weather the other night. He starts calling it Turkey Day. You know, like I said, it's just people have no respect. And they never say Happy Thanksgiving as they are not happy about anything. They have long forgotten God. Americans have become some of the most unthankful people, even though God has blessed us more than any other nation in history, with maybe the exception of Israel. There's no excuse for this, as God is gracious even to the unthankful who do not deserve the grace and blessings of God. He would turn to Luke chapter 6, verse 35. Luke chapter 6, verse 35. In Luke chapter 6, verse 35. But love ye your enemies. This is Jesus speaking here. But love ye your enemies and do good and lend, hoping for nothing again, and your reward shall be great, and ye shall be the children of the highest, for he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. Now I have met people that God has performed miracles in their lives after some health issue or other event, and they are completely unthankful and hate God. Some people will never be thankful no matter what. But God said the nations that forget God will be turned into hell. Today, the United States of America and all nations have forgotten God as they push God aside. America needs to repent today or she will be destroyed. Turn to Psalm chapter 9, verse 17. Psalm chapter 9, verse 17. You know, as much as I love this nation, don't think that we're any better than any of these other nations that God has destroyed. God follows through. We do not obey God. He will destroy this nation. But Psalm chapter 9, verse 17. The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. 
I mean, it's clear. Read that again. The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. You know, and as I said, this nation has long forgotten God. Now, just as God provided a bountiful harvest for the pilgrims in 1621, He also provided for the Israelites with manna and water while they were wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. Let's take a look at that. Turn to Exodus chapter 16, verse 35. Exodus chapter 16, verse 35. Exodus chapter 16, verse 35. And the children of Israel did eat manna forty years, until they came to a land inhabited. They did eat manna until they came under the borders of the land of Canaan. Now the Israelites offered sacrifices of thanksgiving to God. If you would, turn to Leviticus chapter 7, verses 12 through 15. So Leviticus chapter 7, verses 12 through 15. Okay, Leviticus chapter 7, starting in verse 12. If he offer it for a thanksgiving, then he shall offer with the sacrifice of thanksgiving, unleavened cakes mingled with oil, and unleavened wafers anointed with oil, and cakes mingled with oil of fine flour fried. Besides the cakes, he shall offer for his offering leavened bread with the sacrifice of thanksgiving of his peace offerings. And of it he shall offer one out of a whole oblation for an heave offering unto the Lord. And it shall be the priest that sprinkleth the blood of the peace offerings. And the flesh of the sacrifice of his peace offerings for thanksgiving shall be eaten the same day that it is offered. He shall not leave any of it until the morning. Now these were to be done by the person's own free will. Stay there in Leviticus and go to chapter 22, verse 29. Leviticus chapter 22, verse 29. And when ye will offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving unto the Lord, offer it at your own will. And now if you would turn to Amos chapter 4, verse 5. Amos chapter 4, verse 5. Amos chapter 4, verse 5. And offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving with leaven, and proclaim and publish the free offerings. For this liketh you, O ye children of Israel, saith the Lord God. Now we as Christians should also offer sacrifices to God with our time, money, and talents to win souls for Jesus as a thanksgiving to God for saving us and providing for us daily. Now many godly men in scripture gave thanks to God. The Levites gave thanks to God at the dedication of Solomon's temple to God. Turn to uh, 1 Chronicles chapter 5 verse 13. 1 Chronicles chapter 5 verse 13. In 1 Chronicles chapter 5, verse 13, it came even to pass as the trumpeters and singers were as one, to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music, and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endured forever, that then the house was filled with the cloud, even the house of the Lord. Now when the Israelites returned to Jerusalem, following Babylonian and Persian captivity, they laid the foundation for rebuilding the temple that was destroyed by the Babylonians, and they gave thanks to God. He would turn to Ezra chapter 3, verse 11. 
So Ezra chapter 3, verse 11. Okay. Ezra chapter 3, verse 11. And they sang together by course, in praising and giving thanks unto the Lord, because he is good, for his mercy endureth forever toward Israel. And all the people shouted with a great shout when they praised the Lord, because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. Now Israelites gave thanks to God during the rebuilding of the wall around Jerusalem. If you would, turn over to Nehemiah now. Nehemiah chapter 12, verse 40. So Nehemiah chapter 12, verse 40. Nehemiah chapter 12, verse 40. So stood the two companies of them that gave thanks in the house of God, and I and the half of the rulers with me. Now Daniel gave thanks to God for revealing what Nebuchadnezzar dreamed. You would turn to Daniel chapter 2 verse 23. Daniel chapter 2 verse 23. Okay, Daniel chapter 2, verse 23. I thank thee and praise thee, O thou God of my fathers, who has given me wisdom and might, and has made known unto me now what we desire of thee. For thou hast now made known unto us the king's matter. Now Daniel prayed and gave thanks to God three times a day. Turn over to Daniel chapter 6, verse 10. We'll take a look at this. So just... Turn to chapter, Daniel chapter 6, verse 10. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being open in his chamber toward Jerusalem. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. Today, most Christians cannot even pray at all to God any time, let alone three times a day. When Jesus was brought to the temple as a child to be dedicated to the Lord, the widow Anna was a woman who gave thanks to God. Turn to Luke chapter 2, verses 37 and 38. Luke chapter 2, verses 37 and 38. While you're turning there, I want to comment there on that Daniel 6.10. You know, notice that Daniel had said when the writing was signed. In other words, that was when, you know, he was going to be cast into to the den of lions if he was caught, you know, praying other than to uh, the king. But he still did not care. You know, he still did what God told him to do. You know, we can never be ashamed or, you know, stop doing it just because, you know, if, if the government tells us to do something immoral, ignore them, disobey them, and obey God. So Luke chapter 2, verse 37 and 38. And she was a widow of about fourscore and four years, which departed not from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayers night and day. And she coming in that instant gave thanks likewise unto the Lord, and spake of him to all of them that looked for redemption in Jerusalem. Now we are told over and over in Scripture that we are to give thanks to God. If you would turn to 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 8. 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 8. Okay, 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 8. Give thanks unto the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people. And then now look down at verses 34 and 35, 1 Chronicles chapter 16. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. And say ye, save us, 
O God of our salvation, and gather us together, and deliver us from the heathen, that we may give thanks to thy holy name, and glory in thy praise. Now the Psalms are full of verses to thank God. We're going to be looking at a few of them here in the Psalms quickly. It's Psalm 136, verses 1 through 3. So Psalm 136, verses 1 through 3. Okay, Psalm 136, verses 1 through 3. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. O oh, give thanks unto the God of gods, for his mercy endureth forever. O oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endureth forever. And notice there that the, the true God that we worship, the true God Jehovah, is the God of gods. And he's also the Lord of lords. You know, there's a lot of Christians that just don't even understand that. But also then in Psalm 136, look at verse 26. Oh, give thanks unto the God of heaven, for his mercy endureth forever. And then now turn to Psalm 26, verse 7. So Psalm 26, verse 7. Psalm 26, verse 7. That I may publish with the voice of thanksgiving and tell of all thy wondrous works. And then now go to Psalm 50, verse 14. Psalm 50, verse 14. Okay, Psalm 50, verse 14. Offer unto God thanksgiving and pay thy vows unto the Most High. Then now turn to Psalm 100, verse 4. Psalm 100, verse 4. Now we're not going to look at one verse here, but remember, this entire Psalm 100 was writ read by William Brewster when the pilgrims first sighted land after they were arriving, you know, there in Plymouth on the Mayflower. You know, but he read this entire Psalm. We're just going to look at verse 4 of it. So Psalm 100, verse 4. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. And into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him. And bless his name. Now Christians should pray. And thank God. For their food before eating. And this includes a puppet. You know I've talked about this before. But do not be ashamed of God. Many people do not get food every day. So we should be thanking God. For his blessings. Jesus set the example. By praying and thanking God. For the food. Before feeding the 4,000 men. Turn to Matthew chapter 15 verse 36. Actually that should be 5,000 men there. Matthew chapter 15 verse 36. No that was 4,000 sorry. Yes sir. 4,000 men. Matthew chapter 15 verse 36. And he took the seven loaves and the fishes. And gave thanks and break them. And gave to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude. You know, of course, Jesus also prayed for the 5,000 men as well. You know, Jesus set the example for us. Jesus gave thanks for the cup at the Last Supper, which represented his future shed blood on the cross for our sins when he instituted the Lord's Supper. Turn there to Matthew chapter 26, verse 27. Matthew chapter 26, verse 27. In Matthew chapter 26, verse 27. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. But Jesus, over and over, he was always, you know, trying to set the example for us. But all food is good for us to eat if we pray and ask God to bless it. Turn to 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 3 through 5. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 3 through 5. 
You know, there's some cults today that sit there and say well, we can't eat certain foods, but that's not true. If you ask the blessing on it, then it, you know, God, God will uh, bless the food. You know, we're not as Gentiles; we're not having to have the clean and unclean food the way the Israelites had. But First uh, Timothy chapter four, verses three through five, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good, and nothing to be refused, if it be received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. But So you know, that's the key things there, is you need to receive it in thanksgiving, truly believing that God has given it to you, and Ask the blessing on it in prayer. You know, if you just start eating it like an animal, then no, you're not necessarily going to get the blessing out of it. You know, that, that God expects you to, you know, thank Him and so forth for it. But God is worthy to be praised and thanked each and every day for the things He provides for us. God often even provides the things that we are not even aware of. God said those who do not provide for their own are worse than an infidel. We're still there in 1 Timothy. Turn over to chapter 5, verse 8. 1 Timothy, chapter 5, verse 8. You know, this kind of goes back to our Sunday school lesson as well about the men being the head of the house, you know, that they're to take care of the family. And, you know, there's some of these men that don't take care of their, their uh, you know, provide for the family. And I'm not talking about if you can't physically able to a wetter. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about men that just don't want to provide because they're useless, they're lazy, and so forth. That uh, you know, they expect the, the woman to do it. Well, that's not, it's the man's job to provide. And God refers to them as an infidel. But let's take a look at here, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8. But if any provide not for his own, especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. Now God is no infidel as he always takes care of his own children and even his enemies. God provides for the sparrow that is not worth much and does not forget them. So do you not think he will provide for his own children? You know, if he's going to take care of the birds and so forth, he'll take care of his own children. Turn to Luke chapter 12, verse 6. Luke chapter 12, verse 6. In Luke chapter 12, verse 6. Are not five sparrows sold for two farthings, and not one of them is forgotten before God? You remember the farthing used to be a English coin and then a British coin, and a farthing was one two hundred and fortieth of the pound. You know, it was it, it was uh, trying to remember it took uh, or no, yeah, and it was one twelfth of a, of a penny. You know, that's how little a farthing was. I mean, it was basically worth nothing, and that's what God's saying. That these birds basically you get two of them for the farthing. And um, for two farthings, rather, you get five birds for, for two farthings. That's about how, I mean, they're basically not worth anything, but he still provides for them. So if you think he's going to provide for them, he's going to provide for his own children. So turn to Matthew chapter 6, verse 26. Matthew chapter 6, verse 26. Behold, the fowl, this is Jesus speaking here. Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than them? So again, God's showing that He takes care of all the birds, not just the sparrows and the different ones, that He provides for all these animals that, of course, He's going to provide for you as well. Now, Christians should give God thanks every day for all the things He does for each of us. Thank God for saving us and for sending His Son, Jesus, so that we could have the, that salvation. Thank God that He still allows you another day on this earth and that you can breathe without thinking about it and your heart beats without any thought from you. Thank God you have a roof over your head, clothes on your body, and food on the table and live in a place where for now we can still worship without fear and have the freedom to assemble. 
Pray that this will continue. And I seriously mean that. Pray that that will continue. Too many Christians never thank God for what He does for us each and every day. They take God for granted, especially American Christians who have much to be thankful for compared to the rest of the world, yet are some of the most ungrateful people, including Christians. And yes, and I mean that seriously, even most American Christians are so ungrateful that, you know, if they only knew what people in other nations, you know, that the poorest poor here still have far more than most of even the rich in other nations. You know, we don't really have too many true poor here in the United States of America. Most poor are poor because they're, they don't want to work, they're lazy, or um, they just, you know, find, you know, find some, you know, they mismanage their money or do whatever. But, you know, there are very, very few true, true poor Americans. There's so many things that provide for them and stuff that, you know, most of them are not truly poor, not in the scriptural sense. Now, most American Christians just expect God that he is supposed to give them everything they want and are not thankful one bit. You know, I don't know how many times you hear Christians praying, oh, Lord, you know, I need this fancy car, I need this boat. You know, they always want the latest toy. You know, even even like little things like the latest video game comes out and, you know, they, they got to have all the latest thing, the latest iPhone or whatever it is, you know, and it's like, it's, uh, you know, there's just too many things that, that uh, they're not, they're, they're praying for things that they don't really need. They're not, they're not thankful for what God has already given them. You know, most never pray for their food or anything else. And I've seen plenty of people out of restaurants and they never pray for their food and everything else. And you see them elsewhere. You know, they're, they're not thankful one, one iota. Now, Christians should be thankful and everything give thanks. God commands us to be thankful. You would look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. This is, this is one verse that Christians should know. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. You know, that's God's will that we give we give thanks for everything. I mean, I, I said we get people take too much granted that. Just be thankful that you woke up out of bed this morning. You were able to get out of bed this morning. You were physically able to. You the, the, you were able to breathe. As I said, to think, you know, without thinking about it. Let's turn to uh, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 20. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 20. Okay, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 20. Giving thanks always for all things unto God. And the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, God is pleased when Christians give Him thanks for what He does for them. When we live our lives in a godly manner, this shows our thanks to God. Turn to Colossians chapter 3, verse 15. Colossians chapter 3, verse 15. Colossians chapter 3, verse 15. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. If we are Christians, we should abound with thanksgiving. Stay there, Colossians, and turn back one chapter, chapter 2, verse 7. So Colossians chapter 2, verse 7. Rooted and built up in him, established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Now we as Christians should not be thankful just on Thanksgiving Day, but every day of the year. Turn to Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15. 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 By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. 
We need to learn to thank God even for the things that do not go according to the way we want it, whether a job we do not get or a health issue that arises. God said to give thanks in everything, not just for the things we wanted or like. You know, we saw that up there in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, in everything, give thanks. You know, again, no one likes to be sick or no one likes certain things, but God has a plan and always knows best. If he wants you sick or he doesn't want you to get that job or whatever, that's his will. And we need to thank God for those things. You know, this, this is a... Not always easy, but it is God's command. You know, as I said, God always knows best and has a reason for all things. You know, there might, we don't know always, we may never know sometimes why God had something happen, just like with Job, but there's always a reason, and it may be something to help lead somebody else to the Lord. And in closing, let's turn to uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 40. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 40. God, having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. So see, he provides something even better for us. He closes one door, but he opens another door. So you may not get this job, but he opens some better job or whatever it may be. And everything he does is to bring glory to him. So praise him and thank God even in the dark days and times. It may not always be easy to thank God at times, but we still must. It is easy to thank God when all is going well, but true thanks is shown when all is not well. You know, and and I, you know, that, that implies, I've said that even before to me, I preached myself here. You know, our nation, we need to pray for our leaders. They're wicked, evil people, but that's exactly why we need to pray for them, because they are wicked, evil people. So we need to pray for them that they'll turn and get saved. You know, and then they won't be these wicked evil people. They will now be our brothers and sisters of Christ. That, you know, Jesus prayed for his enemy, and we need to pray for our enemies. And um, like I said, I'm not saying that's something that's easy, but we need to. You know, we need to thank God that they're there. You know, as bad as it is, in some ways, I pray that God will use how they're destroying our nation as a way to re to bring revival that people might turn back to, to God. Because as persecution comes, usually whenever a nation gets persecuted, then more and more people get saved than when there's no persecution. That's why China and, and North Korea and, and uh, some of those nations like that, Iran, they have some of the fastest growing number of people get saved because they, they endure this persecution. So I'm not saying I just heard what persecution, but we still need to thank God so that maybe people will get saved during this time. Let us turn Thanksgiving back into a day like it was meant to be. A day of thanksgiving to God for all of his blessings he bestows upon us. For those who are not saved, call upon Jesus today for salvation, and you will have reason to be the most thankful in your life that you will ever be, since now you will have everlasting life, and you too can know the true meaning of thanksgiving. And I do plead for anybody out there that may not be saved that's listening to this, that today is the day of salvation. Turn to the Lord. You know, if you're not saved, be saved and be thankful and, you know, that God sent his son to be our savior. You know, to die on that cross, rise again and, and shed his blood for us. You know, that if it wasn't for that, we would be lost in our sins. You know, thank God for that so that you may know what the true meaning of Thanksgiving is. And for all those who may be listening, I want to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving for this coming Thursday. With that, we're going to have a word of prayer and then we'll have our invitational hymn. Father, we thank you for the time you allowed us here to just study your word here this morning, just, just preach your word. Father, we do want to thank you for your son Jesus, what he did for us on Calvary. And we do thank you for all the things that we, just, we take for granted each and every day, Lord. As I mentioned, just the little things like being able to breathe and just uh, getting up and out of bed and all the things that people don't realize until they have to start struggling with those things, just being able to walk around and so forth. You know, having a roof on our head and clothes and food and all the things that many, many Christians, even in many nations, they don't have that, that uh, luxury. So, Father, we do want to thank you for all the things that you do in our lives. We do pray for safety for each and every one as they leave here today. Just pray for a safe return here tonight. And we just continue to pray for those that need your healing touch. 
Just be with each and every one here in this church. We just ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.